I am so tired. Ugh. I don't know why. A lot going on. I. It's Friday evening. I want to get the car to Pops's this weekend. I got to work this weekend. So I'm going to try. I got my stuff from to finish putting the front end together. We're going to try and do it without no. anything up. And getting the car back on four wheels. So let's do it. There's lots of welding needed on the lower control arm. So I cleaned the areas with a wire wheel to give myself a good surface to weld to. I then trace out my lower ball joint mount and use the plasma torch to cut it out. A little more work from the grinder and our fitting slides in nice and snug. The cast on my broken arm ensures precision-like accuracy when mounting the bung into the lower control arm. And with the ball joint bung mounted fully in place, we can now attach the shock mount. I like to mount tow hooks on the control arms to hook it on on the trailer. I prefer to mount it to the control arms because it gives you, it lets the car suspension work while it's on the trailer. And you don't have to worry about trying to suck it so tight that the springs aren't gonna compress and loosen up your straps and then the straps come off. This way, when you mount them to the control arms and to the axles, the straps stay tight all the time and then the car actually, the suspension works on the car and it helps tow things a little nicer and less chance of your straps coming off. So I always weld tow hooks onto the control arms. I just use old springs. I've been using this old one. This is kind of what's left. I've been using it for everything. So we're gonna chop this up and make a tow hook out of it. So I really ground down the edges. And that way I can make a couple passes and get a lot of a lot of fillet weld in there. So that's nice and strong. Right? Spring steel is a little trickier to weld. And we don't wanna we don't wanna rip it off on the trailer either. Proper welds are vital for this application, as the last thing we wanna see is a race car falling off a trailer and racing down the highway. I'm letting the welds cool down on the control arm right now, so I thought I'd get started on the new wheel bearings. They just press in. Um, I don't have those fancy bearing insert tools, but I do have a decent assortment of sockets, and usually you can find one the same size. And pound it down nice and evenly. Uh-oh. So I either didn't order the inner wheel bearings or they're coming on a different package. Luckily, I had a good, one of the old Chevette hubs that I was running, left it complete. So I was able to pull that bearing. It's still in good shape. We'll put that one in and go with it. For some reason, I remember growing up and I've seen um, like a bunch of people, mechanics that I've known and grown up around, pack bearings. And they used to just swab a piece of, or a blob of grease in their hands and they'd just sit there and they'd tap that bearing and they'd pack in there until it was full of grease. And I thought like that to me is just the epitome of an old school mechanic getting your hands dirty, doing whatever it takes. I mean, now modern cars, bearings are all sealed. You replace a whole hub, you, you don't, trailer, maybe, trailer mechanics are still packing bearings, I don't know. I can't do that at this point, right? One hand, well, I don't know if I wanna get grease all over that. 
So now they make these. Now they make these fancy bearing packers, and it's pretty easy and pretty soft, if you ask me. You just keep squeezing, and eventually the grease just works its way through the bearings, and next thing you know, you're a millennial. The trickiest part um, to actually using the dats and hubs on the Chevette spindles was finding the um, proper rear wheel seal. Um, the Chevette bearing spot on the spindle is a little different than the Datsun. So I just, I had to source a seal that had the Datsun outer diameter and the Chevette inner diameter was pretty common, pretty easy to find. Um, that was really the only thing that isn't a direct part from one or the other car. So I've got the control arm ready. I've got the hub pretty much ready. Next um, is the spindle. The only thing I need to do to the spindle is um, just taper out the openings for the ball joints, right? The lower one's pretty close. Just needs to be opened up a little bit. Um, the upper one needs quite a bit of work. So I've got the reamer. Fortunately, both ball joints are the same taper. Um, I'm sure there's a more precise way to do this, but I like to uh, just set the clutch on a cordless drill Lots of cutting fluid, go little by little, test fit it, and go from there. Again, the precision of a broken arm and a cast is one's true key to success on the dirt track. So I'm pretty much ready to put the hub onto the spindle and button it all up. I'm foregoing the painting and making it look respectable step in order to get it out the door so it is what it is seals in bearings in in the back and it should drop on with a little bit of force just like that I got the front bearing in the millennial mechanics favorite tool and drop that in next seat it in the race Pack a little bit more of the leftover grease in there. I don't know if your millennial mechanical protégés will be doing this. They wouldn't want to get their precious little hands dirty. Alright, next step is this little washer deal. This is basically what keeps it all together. Seats the inner bearing, which keeps pressure, or seats the outer bearing. Oh geez. Which keeps pressure on the inner bearing. Much like the bearing packing mechanics that I looked up to, um, I'm sure there's a torque spec for the hub or for the spindle nut. I kind of prefer to go by feel. I like it right there. I think if I go any tighter, it's going to be too tight and I need that spot there to get the cotter pin in. There you go. The Chevetson hub assembly, ready to go back on the car. Okay, everything's together. We're ready to put it in the car. But I think I'm tapping out. I'm exhausted, I really am. And I gotta be up early for work. This was a good step, it was a lot of work, but now we just gotta bolt it onto the car, put it all back together. I'll try and do that tomorrow. It'll be another day regardless.
All right, it's another day. It's the next day. We're back, ready to get this thing going. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Uh, did 11 hour shift today. Gotta go back tomorrow morning now. Didn't get her all done, so I gotta get this back on the ground tonight. I'm pooped. But, gotta get it done. So we're gonna do it. From my experience, installing the lower control arms can go one of two ways. Not so easy and really, really, really hard. Fortunately, this time around, things went pretty smooth and the installation was pretty quick. Placing the spindle on the lower control arm while trying to seat it into the upper control arm presented its own challenges, mainly because the precision of a broken arm is not as handy here as it is on the bench. When I tore it apart, I showed you guys the brake pads. They're all chipped up. They started to break apart on me. I got a new one. I don't know if you can read that. Brake pads. 77 cents, right? They were like a dollar three. Literally, a dollar three for the set. I'm pretty curious to see what they look like. Dollar three brake pads. There they are. They actually have more meat on them than than the original ones. They look like they're gonna fit. They feel pretty cheap, but for a dollar three, you know I'm going to buy them and see what it's all about. And you know I'm going to put them on a race car and do race car stuff with it. Oh man, it's so awesome. The bonus to running these is if they suck, we go faster. <laughs> There it is. Back on all four wheels. That's a, it's a bit of a relief, not gonna lie. Now, I just gotta find time to get it to Scotty's before he goes on his motorcycle trip. Anyways, all that's really left, I gotta put the steering shaft all back together. Um, but I gotta get the, I wanna get a collar for it and stuff. So it's just together enough now to move it around, but it's not permanent, so I'll get that. Um, and then really that's it. We'll get it to Pops's, kind of give it a once over, give it a new alignment. I did get tie rod ends for it that I didn't put on today just for the fact of getting it to um, being able to drive it on the trailer is the important thing. And we can do that when it's on the on the hoist, when we got the magic tools, the fun tools, the real tools for our Pops's. So that's the plan for now. I don't know when that plan will be executed, but it's a plan nonetheless. We need a couple body panels too now. Um, and I gotta find decals and money for decals for this thing. Um, maybe, we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you next time, cheers. <laughs>